Hello and welcome to this knowledge clip on the International Court of Justice's advisory opinion on the legality of the use by a state of nuclear weapons in armed conflict. Now before we proceed any further, a clarification is due. There has been a request for an advisory opinion on the legality of the use by a state of nuclear weapons in armed conflict by the World Health Organization. Whilst at the same time, there was a request for an advisory opinion by the United Nations General Assembly on the legality of the threat or use of nuclear weapons. And these two requests, of course, are interrelated. But we will be solely looking at the first one, namely by the, requests, uh, the request by the World Health Organization. Now, as you probably know, the International Court of Justice, which is situated in The Hague, is one of the organs of the United Nations. And essentially, the court has jurisdiction in two forms of proceedings, contentious proceedings and advisory proceedings. And today, we will be focusing on the latter. But nonetheless, let's briefly look into the difference. So, when it comes to jurisdiction in contentious proceedings, the International Court of Justice is called upon to decide disputes of a legal nature submitted to it by states. Now, the jurisdiction in contentious proceedings is open only to states. So only states can bring a legal dispute to the court for resolution. On the contrary, international organizations may request the International Court of Justice to deliver an advisory opinion on a specific legal question. And the advisory proceedings are not open to states. So whereas only states may become parties uh, to disputes, contentious disputes before the court, states may not request advisory opinions. And whereas international organizations may request advisory opinions, they may not become parties before, uh, parties in disputes before the court. So this is an important distinction. Now, what about the advisory jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice? The first port of call is Article 65 of the Statute of the International Court of Justice, according to which the court may give an advisory opinion on any legal question at the request of whatever body may be authorized by or in accordance with the Charter of the United Nations to make such a request. So in order to find out which body is authorized, um, we need to turn to the Charter of the United Nations, which is the Constitution essentially, of the United Nations. So Article 96 of the United Nations Charter stipulates under paragraph A that the General Assembly or the Security Council may request the International Court of Justice to give an advisory opinion. So the Security Council and the General Assembly are authorized to ask for an advisory opinion. But on top of that, paragraph B stipulates that other organs of the United Nations or specialized agencies which may at any time be so authorized by the General Assembly, may also request advisory opinions of the court on legal questions arising within the scope of their activities. So if we bring these two uh, provisions together, there are uh, certain necessary conditions that need to be met in order for the court to exercise its jurisdiction in advisory proceedings. So first of all, the opinion requested must be on a legal question. Second, the body requesting the opinion must be authorized by or in accordance with the United Nations Charter. So as we saw, the General Assembly of the United Nations and the Security Council of the United Nations may request advisory proceedings, but also specialized agencies may request advisory proceedings if they have been authorized to do so by the General Assembly. Now, especially with regards to specialized agencies, the question must be one arising within the scope of the activities of the requesting agency. 
Now, the Nuclear Weapons Advisory Opinion and uh, the request for an advisory opinion by the World Health Organization. And the World Health Organization is a specialized agency in the United Nations. The World Health Assembly, which is the decision-making body of the World Health Organization, adopted on Ma um, May 14, 1993, a resolution which requested the court to give an advisory opinion on the following question. In view of the health and environmental effects, would the use of nuclear weapons by a state in war or other armed conflict be a breach of its obligations under international law, including the constitution of the World Health Organization? So this was the question put to the court. Now the court looked into whether the conditions that we refer to above were met in this case. So first of all, it looked into whether the World Health Organization as a specialized agency was duly authorized by the General Assembly to request an advisory opinion. And indeed, according to the 1948 agreement between the United Nations and the World Health Organization, such authorization was expressed and it existed. So the court held in this respect that there was no doubt that the World Health Organization was duly authorized by the United Nations General Assembly in accordance with paragraph 90, with Article 96 of the Charter. So the second criterion, of course, is the nature of the question put to the court. Is it a legal question? So the court held that questions framed in terms of the law and raising problems of international law appear to be questions of a legal character. The fact that the question also has political aspects does not suffice to deprive it of its characterization as a legal question. And if you come to think about it, many questions that we would perceive as legal have political aspects. And what is more, the fact that the International Court of Justice is to give an advisory opinion on such a question will have political implications. But as the court noted, the political implications that the opinion given might have are of no relevance in the establishment of its jurisdiction. So the court found that the question, as phrased and as we reiterated above, was essentially framed in terms of the law and it was a legal question, irrespective of political aspects it might have. Now, the most uh, problematic uh, was the third criterion, namely that the question had to arise within the scope of activities of the requesting agency. Um, and that is a condition that applies to specialized agencies, as we said. So in order for the court to answer uh, in, as to whether this condition was met, it had to delineate the field of activity of the World Health Organization. In order to do so, the court uh, suggested that we need to look to the relevant rules of the organization and in the first place its constitution. And so the court did. It looked into the constitution of the World Health Organization and it found that uh, the provisions therein may be read as, and I quote, authorizing the organization to deal with the effects on health of the use of nuclear weapons and to take preventive measures aimed at protecting the health of the populations in the event of such weapons being used. Yet there was a problem here, and the court went into that, namely that the question did not relate to the effects of the use of nuclear weapons on health but to the legality of the use of such weapons in the light of their health and environmental effects. As the court noted, whatever those effects might be, the competence of the World Health Organization to deal with them is not dependent on the legality of the acts that cause them. Essentially, the court argued that it is immaterial whether nuclear weapons are lawful or unlawful. The use of nuclear weapons by states is lawful or unlawful. What matters and what falls within the scope of activities of the World Health Organization is the effect of nuclear weapons on the health of the population. But this is not what the question asked. So the court concluded that none of the functions specified in the World Health Organization constitution had a sufficient connection with the question as phrased. And thus, 
um, the legality of nuclear weapons could not be considered as arising within the scope of activities of the World Health Organization. Thus, the third criterion was not met. And on the basis of these considerations, the court, by 11 votes to 3, found that it was not able to give the advisory opinion requested by the World Health Organization. Thank you for your time in watching this knowledge clip.